It's, Sorry if my head's in the way. It is. Your head is ginormous. Oh, that <laughs> helps tons! <laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome to my video on updates, bugs, and the future of Phasmophobia. If you've been playing Phasmophobia for a while, by now you're already ready for some new levels. Phasmophobia developers are currently working on a prison, an apartment complex, and a mansion. These maps all sound like they're probably fairly large. I imagine the prison will probably be very similar to Asylum. The apartment building could very well be a medium-sized map, depending on how many apartments the building has. The mansion seems like it would be a more modernized large map. It could include things like a pool or a basketball court or even hidden passageways. Of course, the community has their own ideas of what maps might be good for Phasmophobia. Suggestions like a carnival, a fun house, a yacht or a boat, old Victorian houses, a morgue, a forest or a camp, church or a cemetery, shopping malls, hospitals, all of these are possibilities, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see some of them in the future. Phasmophobia also has plans to add ghost voices for when the ghost is hunting. This could include things like possessed players sounding different, crying babies or giggling babies. You could even hear whispers like, I see you. Hallucinations, additional sounds like groaning or crying, whistling or singing. Windows are about to get a lot creepier as well. Developers plan to add static ghost shadows on the windows with a chance to spawn based on your sanity. So this means we could see faces in the windows or silhouettes in the windows. We could even possibly see faces in mirrors or shadows moving or slipping underneath the furniture. Developers also have plans to make plates and glasses smash into pieces when they're thrown. This means when ghosts throw objects around, there's a chance that they will break. Some suggested player ideas include things like knives in the kitchens and dining rooms being flung and stuck into the walls, TVs breaking, and light bulbs exploding. Developers also plan to add distant screams for outside and things in the windows of other houses. I'm not really sure how this will work unless the entire neighborhood is haunted, but it could add to the immersion. Players have suggested things such as cats screeching or dogs barking, even trash cans falling over might be good ideas. There are new items coming to the game as well. If you've played quite a bit, you've probably accumulated quite a bit of cash. There are currently three new items coming to the game. The first is a spotlight item for tripods. There's not a lot of detail on this item yet, but I would assume that it is to light up those areas that are a little darker. You could also use this item in place of flashlights or rather than turning the breaker back on if it has been flipped. Developers also plan on adding an SLS camera. The SLS camera, or Structured Light Sensor Camera, works by projecting its own invisible infrared laser grid over a wide field of view. The camera sensor is able to calculate the distance between these infrared dots in order to build a three-dimensional model of its view. In other words, it is able to pick up movement and is able to recognize and highlight human figures. As if this wasn't creepy enough, this technology is used in things like the Microsoft Kinect, which is on the Xbox, and in your phones for facial recognition. Some gamers have found that their Xboxes sometimes saw figures at random behind them or in their house when there was no one there with them. And finally, night vision goggles. This item is expected to be expensive. I'm not sure if this will replace the flashlight for players or if you'll be able to use it in place of cameras to spot ghost orbs. There were also suggestions from users for things like a thermal camera and extra monitors in the van. It would be nice if you could upgrade your van so you could watch multiple cameras at the same time. Other expensive items that players have asked for include a tablet to check cameras from inside the location, purchasable Ouija boards, and a headlamp. I expect that some of these items will likely be available to us in the future, including the ones that the developers have not yet confirmed that they are adding. Developers have quite a long list of things that they are partially completed already. Based on the sound effects that the developers are currently working on, I would expect that in the near future, we will be hearing locker doors opening, closing, and locking. Developers are currently working on randomizing the weather. That means that Tanglewood may not always be rainy, and it could make the other maps sometimes have rain. It could also introduce new weather types, such as fog. Developers are currently working on making the journal accessible by the main menu. They also intend to move the last page of the journal to the van. This will solve the VR journal bug that some players have experienced. 
Developers have also indicated that they are going to add an item requirement to the main store screen. I'm not sure if this means that we will have an idea of what objectives we have before we leave, or if this is just simply suggestions. Developers plan on adding a salt objective. Currently, we have objectives for crucifixes, motion sensors, thermometers, but we do not have one for salt, so this will be a nice addition. Developers plan on making it so that ghosts have a chance to throw objects toward the players. This definitely adds to the spooky factor if a ghost can throw knives and plates and cups at you. Developers plan on making that basketball that we have in our lobbies bounce. I suspect that this will also translate over to the balls that are sometimes found in our locations, like the basketball court in the Brownstone High School and in many of the houses. So now rather than rolling down the stairs, there's a chance that that ball will bounce down the stairs. Developers plan on adding localization to the house map room names. I think this means that they're planning on adding upstairs, downstairs, second floor to the descriptions of the rooms. For example, I had a hunt the other day where the Ouija board told me the ghost was in the hallway, but it didn't say which hallway. Developers also plan on making the ghost interact with objects during its hunt phase. This seems pretty spooky to me. I can't imagine you being hunted and at the same time the ghost is throwing things around. Or even spookier, if the ghost is following you down a hallway in the high school and all the lockers open as it passes. They're also going to make candles placeable. So rather than lighting the candle and just tossing it on the ground where it gives barely any light, you should be able to place them in the near future. Developers are also adding a toggled mute for VR. I suspect this is because VR players would like to be able to mute their mic during hunt phases. Developers are currently looking for ideas on adding something for players who are dead to do. They're also considering nerfing the thermometer because they feel it is too easy to find the ghost room and potentially removing the random contract and letting you pick what map you want to play. And finally, there's quite a lot of bugs in Phasmophobia. It's important to remember that Phasmophobia is an early release game. As I mentioned before, dead VR players can't grab the journal. There's currently a bug with the ghost writing book when it is placed on the VR belt. Sometimes it will show other players that they are holding the book even when they are not. There's also a bug with the cameras where they will cycle without anybody pressing any buttons. Some players believe that this is just teammates turning on or off cameras or the ghosts interfering with the cameras. However, this is just a bug you're experiencing. Non-VR photos don't show up in the VR journal. Developers are looking at adding a reconnect button to help with the server issues. I don't know if this will put you back inside your map or it'll just put you back in the lobby with your team. There's also an inventory bug that if you reconnect to your lobby will sometimes duplicate items already in the equipment list. There's also an inventory bug that if two players press the add item button at the same time, only one will be added. I believe that both items actually are put in the equipment list, but it only increases the number that come with you by one. Many of you have probably experienced this bug, which is why you sometimes will only have three or four flashlight, even though every player put in a flashlight. Developers are also looking for a new leveling system that would scale with experience per level. Currently, every level is 100 experience. So if you're doing professional levels, you're getting two to three levels per every hunt. Developers are adding a make host button on the server screen. If you've done more than a few hunts, you're already aware that it often swaps the host around. This will be useful when the host only has crappy maps to choose from. We've all been there. We only have maps that are amateur and we're level 500. The high school has a bug that I discovered in a very terrifying way. After being hunted, I tried to open the side doors and was unable to interact with the door. If you're the host of the lobby, this will be true for you as well. There's also plans to add an option button in the lobby. That way you don't have to leave the lobby to change your settings. Kind of a funny bug is that if you're playing in VR and you lay down on the floor, the ghost cannot kill you. If you watched my crucifix video, then you already know that every crucifix has two uses. Developers intend to add some way for players to know when the crucifix has been used just once. Some suggestions include things like the crucifix breaking in half, one listed bug from developers is regarding sanity. It specifically says don't set the sanity screen to question mark in higher difficulties, which makes me believe that we will not know if our sanity is higher or lower in the higher difficulties. Developers currently have the ghost chance to wander to a different room set to be increased, which makes me think that currently it's not happening as frequently as they would like to have it happen. I don't know if this means the ghost will just wander around a larger area or if possibly change the room that it is haunting. Developers also plan on making the ghost walk to the last location it spotted a player instead of walking away. This could make haunts in larger maps like Asylum or School a lot more difficult. They also intend to add a drop down to select the contract difficulty rather than it just being random. 
Voice recognition definitely makes this game very unique. However, if you tab out while you're playing, sometimes that voice recognition stops working. This means the ghost will stop responding to you. If a VR and a non-VR player grab an object at the same time, they won't be able to use any items. I haven't personally experienced this, but I only play with one person that plays on VR, and so I haven't had a lot of opportunities for this to happen to me yet. I have a couple of interesting bugs that the developers haven't addressed, but I will be covering those in future videos. If you have ideas or suggestions for the game, or if maybe you've encountered a bug I didn't cover, please comment below and let me know. And remember to like and subscribe. Happy hunting!